why you need a dedicated dispatcher in your business. So if you've heard the phrase before, if it's everybody's responsibility, then it's no one's responsibility. So this is the reason when you get big enough in your business that you have two or three people in your call center, you'll eventually need to split up your customer service rep and your dispatcher. And so we recently did this in our business. We just passed the three, $4 million mark, and it's about 15 employees, 10 technicians in the field, 15 total. And so we felt the pressure from the call center not working properly. And so we said, now is the time to finally do it. And so we split the position. CSR is your customer service rep. They're the bubbly, happy person who knows how to deal with somebody's calling and is in a bad situation because they need home service of some sort, electrical, HVAC, plumbing, whatever the case may be. And they book that call, they calm the customer down, they grab all the information, and then it goes over to the dispatcher. We'll talk about why their position is so important in a little bit. The reason that the dispatcher needs to be dedicated is really four separate reasons. The first one is distractions. So as you grow, you start your call volume starts to increase. And now you're answering 50, 60, 100 calls a day. And that's great news for your business, right? Wonderful. But now if the same person or different people are taking calls and dispatching, there's communication errors. And why did this thing happen this way? Or why did this thing happen that way, which can be solved in SOPs. But generally, what ends up needs to be happening is the position structures need to change so that you're dealing with less distractions. You're not worrying about somebody on their job, where they're going, what's going on with the specific job, and then getting a call in from an angry customer whose system's not working. So you want to be able to split those up so that each person can focus at what they're best at. So the first one is to get rid of distractions in your business. The second one is one thing that has absolutely changed our business. And so trust me on this one, end of call debrief. So when a technician finishes up a call, they call the dispatcher. One, to let them know that they're ending the call. They still end it in their service time. They still end it in their systems. But the end of debrief, end of call debrief goes through and their charges, if they need to do reschedules, why is their ticket a zero ticket? It allows the, the dispatcher to grab notes and understand what happened on that call and what's happening going forward with that, that employee and with that client. And so what this has done for business is completely changed our business. It's allowed us to not have anything fall through the cracks anymore. So what we kind of saw happening prior is a technician would go out, they would uh, fix something, they'd offer an estimate, and then they don't follow up because they got busy. It's summer. You can't blame them too much. But it, it creates this missing communication. Whereas now the dispatcher knows, oh, I need to follow up with this person, or hey, this person booked a job. They need a new coil, they need warranty work. Whatever the case may be, it falls on the dispatcher to re dispatch that at a later time. So the end of the call debrief is what it allows for dispatchers to do and they don't have the distractions of incoming calls so they have the time to do that. The third thing is splitting dispatcher and why you have a dedicated dispatcher is it increases revenue. So because the dispatcher's job is to put the right people in the right places, they know hey, Johnny is the best water heater salesman we got. He's the best at servicing them, or Tommy is amazing on tankless, or Joey is great with the backhoe or the mini X or equipment side. And so it allows them to, to move around and put people in the right spots because they're the only ones in charge of that. And so they deal with the movements of people without other people entering it into their system. So they can focus on that. You can scorecard them on that. That is their main responsibility. It's getting the right people into the right places. And last but not least, better customer service, right? The CSRs, the customer service reps, are only talking to customers, doing customer service. And so that's what they can focus on. And it gives them better customer service from an initial talking point. But then it also gives them better service from a dispatching point. Now we have the right tech going out to their job. So I'd rather have, if I'm having issues in my house with a tankless water heater, I'd rather have the water heater expert over versus the, or tankless water heater expert over versus the guy who's really good at installations and digging. So 
It allows us to uh, move people around, get better service, customer service, put the right people in the right places, therefore increasing revenue. It gave us the time to do end of call debriefing with the technicians and it removed the distractions, the unnecessary distractions that this person wasn't necessarily good at. And so a couple months after we did this, we're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. There's of course change management issues. It's difficult in the, in the initial side, but at the end, We've seen huge improvements in our business in terms of customer service and in terms of revenue generation. So I'd highly recommend once you reach that 3 million mark that you start splitting the CSR and the DSR position up.